So we all try to save money when we're shopping, but our brains can influence our decisions to buy more, spend more without even being aware of it. Here with five tips to be a brainier shopper is behavioral economist Melina Palmer. Welcome to you. Thanks for having me. So what does it mean to be a behavioral economist? Essentially, it's the psychology behind buying decisions, why people do the things they do, buy the things they buy, and where traditional economic models assume logical people making <laughs> rational yeah, right. choices, meh, not really the world we're in. So behavioral economics can more accurately predict behavior and understand what people will actually do instead of what we think they should do. But if we're warned ahead of time about what the strategy is, then you can tell yourself, you know, hey, just because it's on the end of the aisle doesn't mean it's a bargain. <laughs> right. It can help you to be more aware. The subconscious actually makes 99% of our Ugh, decisions. And so scary. you can't be totally on top of everything all the time. But if you have a good plan, it can definitely help you when you're shopping, especially if you're prone to overspending. So this covers tip number one, understand how your brain really makes decisions. You may think that you're actually being very smart about this, but you're usually just doing something that's rote or impulsive. Right, uh, well, and our brains are actually very habitual, and so the subconscious is making all those choices based on what's worked in the past, right. not necessarily what's best in the future, and that subconscious is also looking for rewards like dopamine and oxytocin and sugar and all of these things that it wants to be having for us, and so it's going to be driving that train if you don't have a good plan. <laughs> okay, <laughs> be aware of numbers, you say, for example, the 10 for $10. Right, so people will actually buy more when something is labeled as 10 for $10 instead of $1 each, even though it's exactly the same thing. And, and I don't need 10, right, probably. Right, and it doesn't even have to be assorted things. It could be cans of soup or things like that. And also having a limit. So if it was to say, you know, soups on sale, limit 12, people will buy more than if there's no limit listed at all, even where you could have bought 100 at the other setup, having that That's big number there makes it so it's kind of locked in your brain. Because you think this must be such a good deal, exactly. you can only have 12, <laughs> right. but you don't need 12. Um, keep an eye out for comparisons. Now this is something I think I fall for, but explain how this works. Right, so this can combine, it's a concept called relativity, and it combines with that anchoring tip I was talking about with the big numbers. So if you go at the front of the store and and there are TVs there for $5,000, or there's an ad for a television at the top of Google or Amazon that's for $5,000. When you get to the back of the store and the televisions are $2,500, that feels like a much better deal wow. than it would have if there would have been only a $1,000 TV, or even if that $2,500 TV had been at the front. Now that's at this high anchor, and you work up or down from that there. That is so interesting. It just sets a point in your brain without mm -hmm. you even being aware. You say consider the frame, um, and this is something super important because <laughs> we do this with fat content with lots of other things and foods. Right, and this is my favorite concept of framing. And so if you were gonna go buy ground beef, as we see here, if you see a stack labeled as 90% fat free next to some labeled as 10% fat, one very obviously <laughs> feels better than the other right. one, even though they're exactly, they're exactly the, the same, same thing, right? And so the way that you would look at this, if you didn't have a list or a plan or you weren't ready to go, and there was something that you weren't gonna buy, but it's there and it looks like such a good deal, is maybe if you flip the frame and say, you know, four out of five dentists recommend this, but that means one dentist said this is bad, do I actually want that thing? That's 20% of the dentists <laughs> exactly. saying it's not good. Right. So just the way you look at it. Can you also tell us a little bit about the way stores are organized and what we need to be prepared for when we walk in? Yeah, just to be aware that at the front of the store, they're gonna have that relativity, right? The, the deals that are bringing you in. And very often, it's just setting you up for the experience of what you're gonna find throughout the store. So having a plan so that you don't get overwhelmed. And everybody hears the tip that you should have a list with you. You should be able to carry that. But the reason that you really need it is because our brains get overwhelmed so yep. easily, it's amazing. One of my favorite studies, they had two groups of people. One was remembering a seven digit number, the other a two digit number. Seems easy enough. They go through a series of tasks and one of them was to pick a snack. Those remembering the two-digit number were much more likely to choose fruit salad. Those remembering the seven-digit number were much more likely to choose chocolate cake because they're 
That's conscious. Amazing. Yeah, their conscious brain was bogged down kind of this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you make a bad choice. So if you're trying to remember those items on a list, then that's bogging down your conscious brain, your subconscious is going to take over, and you're going to grab, be more subject to some of those um, numbers and right, things like right. that. So that's our fifth tip, or overwhelmed brains make impulsive decisions. And I'm thinking that might be practical for, you know, I'm going home from work, I'm busy, I'm thinking about the next thing mm. I run into wherever, right. and that's when I might buy that bag of dark chocolate with <laughs> right. truffles or whatever they are. Right, or if you've got kids with you, or you're really busy and just gonna quickly grab a couple of things and then you get to the register and say, how did I end up with all of these things? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it happens. Yeah. What about, uh, you know, I know I see parents with little kids, and I remember this so well, all the stuff that's packed around the cash register mm -hmm. or, you know, any other area where you have to wait for a while. There are just tricky things there all over the place. Yeah, and it's actually interesting. When the iPhone came out, sales of gum went down a whole lot because it was a distraction oh. piece, right, to be buying and chewing gum. And now now when you're at the checkout, are you more likely to check your Instagram or do something or look else? around to see right. what's <laughs> it's, there to buy. That's right. interesting. Yeah, so that is something I know that is being looked into a lot to say, what is it where it's and the thing is for businesses it's not bad to help people to see what's a good product for them something they might want to get but knowing that it's just hard to break through that subconscious filter with whatever you're trying to do and on a consumer side making sure you're making the right choices it's just a whole balance to all of it where can we get more information like this uh, so I actually have a podcast it's called the brainy business where I help people to understand how their own brains work and how to make better decisions and I have that on my website lots of free and ebook all sorts of things available awesome we will post that with the story today so Thank people you. can read more we appreciate it